I the a-hole for telling my son exactly what my husband did despite him begging me not to tell? I have a son, Adam, 14, from my previous marriage. I'm currently with my husband four years. I handle everything related to Adam's school. He has a friend, Dean, 14, that he started hanging out with a year ago. Dean is an amazing boy and has been nothing but a great influence for Adam. I met Dean's dad, Mike, who's a single dad and we'd see each other daily for school pickup slash drop-offs. My husband kept asking about Mike and pointed out that he's being boundary stumping, but I disagree. Unfortunately, Adam fell sick months ago and had to undergo a surgery recently. It's been hard, but Dean kept visiting. Sometimes Mike would come too and my husband would either ignore Mike or make passive comments towards him. Mike picked up on that, and I told my husband to knock it off because his hostility affected Adam and Dean as well. Days ago, I found Adam crying in his room. This was weeks after getting discharged. I asked and he said that Dean sent him a text telling him they were no longer friends and blocked his number. I was confused as they were fine. I wanted to go talk to Dean, but the next day I found his phone in my husband's car. I confronted him and he said he borrowed it from Dean, but I didn't buy it. After pushing, he confessed that he stole Dean's phone at a hospital and sent Adam a text telling him not to contact him again. I asked why, but he said it was all Mike's fault for being too close to me and acting inappropriately, and said that he didn't want to directly tell Adam to no longer speak to Dean, and chose this strategy to not make Adam hate him while keeping Dean and by extension Mike away. This hit a nerve so hard I started screaming at him. He said he already expressed how uncomfortable he felt with Mike being around and I kept brushing it off. I said it was because of how ridiculous his argument was. Mike has been nothing but respectable and helpful. I yelled calling him insecure and unreasonable and also cruel for causing Adam heartache with a stunt. He begged I don't tell Adam. But I took the phone and returned it to Dean and explained to him and Adam what happened. Adam is no longer speaking to my husband, and he is blaming me for telling instead of keeping it between the adults like I'm supposed to. Now for the top comments. Holy moly! Not stay home. So let me get this straight. Your husband, the one that stole a phone from a kid and then used said stolen phone to mentally mistreat your son because hubby is insecure, is now blaming you for salvaging your son's friendship and giving back the stolen property? What? Correct. That's pretty much what happened. He's now blaming and guilting me for having his relationship with Adam ruined. Your husband is the only a-hole in the situation. Hurting Adam like that was unforgivable. He let his insecurities get a better of him. I really don't see how you come back from this even if he agreed to individual and couples therapy. Not the a-hole. How dare he? He is blaming me for telling instead of keeping it between the adults like I'm supposed to. Which adults is he talking about? Because stealing Dean's phone to text Adam to not contact him again just to keep Mike away from you does not sound like adult behavior. He needs to apologize to Adam and get counseling for his insecurity. You're not stay home. Also, fairly certain that several crimes were committed here as a direct result of the husband being so petty and jealous. It's actually concerning that befriending another parent triggered this kind of response in him. It reeks of distrust and controlling behavior. I think the damage will always be done between Adam and husband. I hope you should also consider if this is enough damage for her too. Not stay home. I don't care what Mike was doing. I don't care what you were doing. He said he wanted it to stay between the adults. And yes, it should have. But you didn't bring the kids into it. He did. Because he stole a child's phone to manipulate your child. He stole from a child so that he could manipulate and lie to your child. He tried to ruin their friendship instead of nutting the heck up and being a man. And tried to find a compromise, trying to actually communicate instead of passive-aggressively being a prick to Mike and you. Literally anything that didn't involve trying to destroy a friendship between two children, one of whom was recovering from a freaking surgery. I'm not usually on a whole girl dump him train on AITA, but this doesn't even need couples therapy. This is a deal breaker. Next story. Am I the a-hole for renting out my husband's man cave? Since we moved into our house three years ago, my husband lives in his man cave. The walkout basement that he plays video games in mostly is a one bed. One bath with a small bar area that can serve as a kitchen. 
He only comes up for food, to prep for work or to sleep, and it's been bothering me because it never helps with the housework or our two sons. But at least he goes to work, so I let it go and leave him be. Five months ago, he was laid off his job and has been applying for another one in sales. Right now, he's collecting unemployment. And along with my teacher's salary, it isn't enough to cover everything. My son, 9 male, has been playing guitar for four years and loves it. But his lesson and guitar are quite expensive, around $300 a month. And my other son does kickboxing, which is $170 a month. I didn't want them to have to give up their activities, so I looked for other ways to make money. My husband is very prideful and won't work a job beneath him. I've already tried to convince him to work a $16 per hour cashier job for our family friend, and he refuses because it would be humiliating having friends see him work at a cash register at 37 years old. So, I found that we could rent the basement out for $1,100 a month, and it would allow my sons to stay with their activities. I told my husband who refused, saying it was his space. I argued I didn't get a space, and if he wanted to keep it, he should get a job while he's looking for another sales job. He got angry and told me it was his house, and he won't allow it being rented out. We both put down payments down and we both make money in this house, but it's his house? I told him we are not making ends meet, and he told me to cancel all the necessary spending including our son's activities. I argued if he got a job or agreed to rent out downstairs, it wouldn't have to. It is said that wasn't his problem. I posted it on Facebook just to see if anyone would be interested, and a student reached out. She's a college student who wanted to rent, and it was a perfect fit because she didn't have a pet and was going to be gone most of the day anyway. I said okay, and went excited to my husband who was really pissed saying we aren't renting out his space. I was pissed he wouldn't sacrifice anything for our sons when I'm working at raising them, and he isn't working now but isn't doing anything to help. I told him I was moving out with our sons and I think he recognized I was serious and gave up and told me to do whatever I wanted. I moved his gaming stuff to our living room and a student moved in today. He is still pissed that I undermined him. And I feel kind of bad because I didn't want to make the decision without his agreement. But at the same time, I feel like he was selfish to refuse to either get a job or give up his man cave for our sons to continue their activities and keep us from going into debt. You are a single mom with three children. So very sorry. 100% not day home. Yep, feels that way. With all due respect and so much sympathy, why do you stay? He is setting a terrible example for your sons. To be honest, but how is around them enough to set anything? Hey, OP, literally what is good about your husband? Not day home. How does he justify that you don't have an area of the house that he essentially has a one-bedroom apartment to hang out in? He should not have had a man cave to start with, and after his back working, I would keep renting it. Men naturally are supposed to have man caves, but all his friends have them. That's how he justified it. Men are also supposed to get off their butt and at least help support their families. My partner graded ISDEP test while job hunting after he graduated with his degree. I supported a family, occasionally working two jobs, while he was in college. That's the sort of crap you just do when you have a family. Not stay home. I make $20 an hour now. I don't have kids. But I guarantee you, if I had to work in fields beneath me, I would. That's utter BS. I don't understand people like this. When you need a job, you get one. I have zero sympathy for people who can work but choose not to because it's beneath them. That attitude is a slap in the face to the workers who have no choice but to work those jobs. Shaking my head, you make half of my monthly income just on the space alone. How childish and elitist. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not wanting to help my mother-in-law in her golden years? My wife, 39 female, and I, 38 male, have been married for over a decade and have two kids, 14 and 12. We both work full-time and do pretty well at our respective careers. We are in a pretty good place financially. We have money saved up for college funds, good retirement plans, not a lot of debts, etc. Honestly, things are pretty good. However, a couple weeks ago, my wife told me that her mom and her stepdad have been having some pretty serious financial problems. 
like don't have any money saved for retirement and could possibly lose their house type problems. These issues have led to mother-in-law and stepdad separating and possibly divorce. Mother-in-law is currently living with my wife's aunt and uncle, but they have two adult kids that live with them and don't have the space. My wife is an only child and wanted us to look into what we can do to help. I asked her what she means by help, because I would be okay with maybe giving a one-time lump sum to get mother-in-law back on her feet, but I am not okay with a long-term situation where we are supporting her for the rest of her life. My wife said she wants to look into maybe remodeling our house and building a mother-in-law suite. I told her that is a non-starter for me. I love my kids, but I am also looking forward to them moving out into the world on their own in a few years. I don't want another dependent, an adult no less, living with us for another 20 years. My wife then suggested the idea of an assisted living home or condo for mother-in-law. But when I asked how she would pay for it and my wife said, we probably would have to, I told her that I don't want to do that either. I asked why her aunt and uncle can't help out. And she said that they have their own kids living with them and they aren't in a position to help like we are. I told my wife again that I am comfortable with a one-time lump sum, but I don't want to be supporting mother-in-law for the rest of her life. I didn't sign up for that. My wife got upset with me and asked me if I would feel the same way if it was my parents. I told her that I can't really answer that because my parents worked hard, planned accordingly, and are in a good financial position to retire soon. I told her that I feel bad for the situation mother-in-law is in, and I am willing to help to a point, but I am not willing to have her live with us for the rest of her life, nor I am willing to pay for her living arrangements indefinitely. I told her that we have our own financial obligations to our kids and our own life plans and retirement goals, and I do not want to jeopardize those or delay them by multiple years. I told her that her mom is close to being able to collect social security. She's 62 and get on Medicare and other government programs, and that she might even qualify for some housing programs and we can look into those. My wife told me I was being cruel and callous for not being willing to help her mom more. She told me I was being an a-hall by wanting to just throw her mom a few bucks and then turn my back on her. Now for the comments. No a-halls here. Damn, this is tough. First of all, 62 is young. Like this woman could be around another 25 to 30 years. So I definitely get you on not wanting to sign up for an additional dependent for the better part of the rest of your life. Especially since there will likely be massive medical expenses. And you sound like you have your financial plans and retirement goals on lock. But I get your wife's angle too. It's her mom, and she wants to help her mom. I guess my advice would be, be careful how you talk about the situation. It sounds very judgmental. Am I making those same judgments? Sure. Silently in my head. Maybe mother-in-law was lazy. Maybe she was dumb. Maybe she was unlucky. Maybe our nation is sliding into a dystopia where poverty and old age are death sentences. In any case, not really helpful for your relationship with your wife to frame things in terms of mother-in-law somehow deserving of her predicament because she made bad choices or whatever. When you marry someone, their family's problems become your problems. You did, in fact, sign up for that. Does this mean you need to let mother-in-law move in or pay for a retirement home? Not necessarily. But as long as your wife wants to give her mom some kind of support and comfort, you're going to have to find some acceptable compromise with her with how to do it. And maybe mother-in-law mortgaged the house and took out loans to pay college tuition for the Opie's wife. Maybe stepdad gambled all the money away on currency speculation and game stock. Maybe one of them has health issues. You make a very good point. My wife paid for her college all on her own, not a dime for mother-in-law. We actually just finished paying off her loans in the past couple years. To my knowledge, neither mother-in-law or stepdad gamble. They don't even drink. Like many people in their 60s, they do have health issues. But they also have horrible American insurance. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife that she cannot replace our dead son with our daughter? So I and my wife, Liana, had our first baby young. I was 18 and out of high school when she got pregnant. Our son Leon was amazing. He was the most fantastic baby. And when he got older, it turned out that he was something of a prodigy. Like at 14 years old, he was learning university physics. And his teachers were recommending us to let him skip grades so he could graduate early. He begged us not to because he loved his friends and didn't want to leave them. 
like he joined a basketball team for them, and it turned out he was also just fantastic at it. But then when he was 15, we lost him. Our daughter Mara was a year old when we lost him, and somehow we managed to keep on going even though we both didn't want to. We've had three more kids since then, and we'll be adopting another, but the hole in our hearts will never be filled. So, Mara is going to start high school and Liana has been pushing her so hard. She is an amazing, intelligent girl, not a prodigy in academics, but she is an insane tennis player and an amazing singer. Every time Liana pushes her and she doesn't succeed academically, she comes to me and points out how Leon would have easily done it. She has never compared Mara to Leon in front of her face, but what if she hears what she says one day? It would crush her. So I ended up in an argument with my wife and I pointed out that Mara is her own person and she cannot turn her into a replacement for Leon. She practically turned volcanic and sent me to the couch and has been very curt with me since then. Just calling me an a-hole and saying I have no right to use our son in an argument. I feel horrible about it. But I don't think I'm the a-hole because my intention wasn't to use his memory like a tool. But maybe if my head is in the sand, you can let me know. Not day home. Unfortunately, she is the one using him as tool and comparison for your daughter. She will grow up to dislike or hate her mom if she keeps doing this. Your wife needs to seek therapy. Honestly, this is what I'm afraid of. She loves her mom so much. Hell, I'll say it, she loves her more than me. And maybe that's the way it should be, given all a mother does. So I absolutely don't want that. Your wife needed grief counseling yesterday. Not the a-hole, but your being the a-hole or not isn't as important as your wife getting some help understanding that internally comparing her kids will help no one and only hurt her relationships with her family in the long run. Your daughter is around the age when your son died, and you're going to feel a lot of crap in the coming years as you see milestones your son never achieved. Best of luck. Not the a-hole. I was pissed at a title. I thought it was the other way around, but a context really makes you a good father for thinking about your kids and not comparing them. I guess your wife really needs therapy. If she keeps this behavior, it'll be bad for your kids. They'll be insecure mentally and emotionally. If your daughter by any chance finds out about the comparison, she'll probably hate her mom or will exhaust herself just to please her. Your wife is already pushing slash pressuring her hard. It wouldn't be too long if she gets sick of this behavior and hate her. Exactly. Not everyone is a prodigy and not everyone needs to be. We would have loved Leon even if he wasn't a super genius. And no amount of pressuring is going to turn Mara into him. 